Hey, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is your boy Fro, bringing guys a brand new video. And today, ladies and gentlemen, today's video is actually very, very different from any other video that we've actually have ever had on this channel. Today's video, I'm actually in a game with my friend Juan Rodriguez, and he's a certified public accountant. He's a CPA that works in the gaming industry with Twitch streamers and with YouTubers. And we actually had a very, very important conversation throughout the game of Warzone about expense tracking about income about filing your taxes as a streamer filing your taxes as a youtuber and a lot more information if you want to be a streamer if you want to be a youtuber or even just like general knowledge about this kind of stuff about finance and stuff like that i think you're really going to like this video but guys i really do enjoy this content i hope you guys enjoy this content i think it brings a lot of value let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more kind of videos such as like this i know it's again a little bit different from what we normally post on the channel but let me know um if you guys do enjoy this um this different kind of content so if you guys want to um help me out please leave a like on the video um we're aiming for 200 likes and i really would appreciate that hope you guys have a great rest of your day see you guys in the next video yo what's going on yo yo what's up what's going on man how are you good good i'm excited for this i'm i'm pumped i'm pumped um you know i told you that i'd play some games in warzone to get warmed up today and I'll unfortunately i did not get to that <laughs> that's right that's right i've been carrying people all day all day <laughs> yeah so we'll need a hard carry frozen i kind of gave the lay of the land earlier but i'll do it again real quick and, and kind of like you just mentioned for because i think we had a lot of people join us since the stream fired up but uh basically frozen and i are just gonna talk like uh, i wanted to ask him just a few questions get his perspective from you know uh, the streamer side of things kind of like what he does and and kind of what are some of his personal finance habits and and things like that um and and he was kind enough to offer to join the stream and, and do this live so rosa i don't know let's see uh, i think a good place just to kick off and, and i think you and i were kind of talking about it earlier this week is and it might not even just be specifically tax related but just finances mm -hmm. is you do a good job with like spending your money in the right places um so kind of what are just like some of your money habits like what are some of your personal finance habits like do you budget do you not create a budget but you kind of got an idea um or, or how do you approach that um yeah so i personally i've never really been about the budget just because i don't like the feeling of like just like restricting restrict you know restriction kind of thing i want to feel like you know i'm free you know i have control of like my money a little bit but i've always um saved definitely like okay so like when you're not making a crap ton of money you don't really have to pay quarterly still but like mm -hmm. i was saving 25 to 30 percent just in case you know to make up for the taxes that i have to pay at the end of the year but at the time i was still working a different job and you know so on and so forth so i'd still save that 20 to 30 percent um every single time i got a donation or my twitch paychecks and stuff like that so that was like the biggest thing and then i don't have any loans and so i was just saving like 70 to 80 percent of my money basically i just i didn't really spend i don't i mean i work from home so i didn't really you know i don't have an expensive car or anything like that i don't you know i just the only thing i really spent money on was like food like that's literally it and then like rent and stuff but <laughs> like i definitely could have saved a lot more money on uh on like you know grocery shopping over ordering food but that's just kind of like like man i don't really spend that much money so i'll just <laughs> spend yeah, a little on yeah. food you know where do you want to drop where do you want to drop um let's go to like let's just um let's just go to like over here or something okay all right i'm cool with that um yeah no i love that okay so you don't like create a formal budget or anything like that but you, you kind of are watching it throughout the year um and kind of understanding that e even if you aren't going to qualify to meet that estimated tax payment you're at least like starting to put a little bit of money away so that you can have the cash at the end of the year and not like you know be surprised with like a couple thousand dollars check yeah yeah exactly so and then another thing that i learned and i, I don't know if like i don't feel it's like from like dave ramsey or whatever i was watching they always had that mentality of like pay yourself first or something like that so like every time you get paid you want to put your money away first and then at the end of the month that's when you use that little extra side money you know for whatever you want you know if it's to buy some you know some things that you don't necessarily need but you want but um you know it's like you're putting the money away first that way uh you don't use the you know instead of using the leftovers to save if that makes sense 
It's like you're no, just no, no. That makes sense. you're saving first versus and then you make you know you make it work for the rest of the month versus you spend all your money and then you invest the rest or you save the rest kind of a right. thing right and, and kind of the whole thing like you know you could be like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna save this but i'm gonna get these sneakers first and you know then maybe you get the sneakers then you end up getting like i don't know like a new graphics card or something and the next thing you know you don't have that money saved that you originally thought you're gonna have saved um well you're gonna have to leave me i don't know this map at all that's all right um just... I haven't played Warzone in a hot, hot minute. Um, okay, here's this, but... I'm just looking um, for some monies. Um... So I kind of just use like my PayPal just for like only the purchases kind of a thing I do need a I still need to get a company credit card because I have like an LLC and I just haven't done that So it'd be much easier to go into right. like my company credit card and like that right there in itself is all the purchases that You know that I want to have deducted, you know, that's all my expenses right there, but right, I have right. I have every one second. There's a guy on me Okay, okay, that's straight. I'm actually gonna come down to this Got one. Let's see, let's drop this again. Yeah, I got one. Missing one there. Uh, there was an, there was another guy up here somewhere too, but he went like over this way or something like that. Oh. Um. Okay, nice. Yeah, so that's a great point actually that you were just talking about was like having a company card, right, or a credit card that is specifically just for streaming, or having like a separate bank account that's just for streaming. That way, like all your Twitch payouts can go to it. Um, you know, all your expenses could go to it. And then it's like another form of, of tracking your stuff throughout the year. Yep. Yep. So I actually, I don't have that yet. It's something that I'm trying to do or I want to do. Oh, this guy's right here. Yeah. On you. So that's what I want to do. And I just haven't, I don't know. I just haven't, cause I, I kind of want to do some research on like the best uh, credit cards, you know, um, now that things are starting to open up again, maybe do like a, an American express, you know, for like, you know, points towards flights or, you know, whatever it may be, yeah. but um basically all my purchases i just kind of like go through my amazon purchase history and then my paypal um records because those are like the only two because it's a lot easier doing that versus like the credit cards kind of a thing right right but uh that's pretty much what i was doing because then i just write it in an express an express uh sheet or google sheets and like i have like equipment and stuff like that or in-game purchases or you know my um say like my utilities or like my spotify or my phone kind of like yeah. monthly um subscriptions or payments that i have as right, well right yeah so you keep track of it so you do it on a monthly basis then or, or how often what makes sense for you i should do it on a monthly basis but i honestly i just take like <laughs> two three hours at the end of the year and i just that's the way i do it that's what you do it and that's what works for you yeah because like yeah. i yeah. i think i figured out like um, that I probably should I need to invest I think more money into like my business And so that's what I did at the start of this year is like I bought a new PC You know, I'm paying now a lot or I'm paying for people to you know Help me with editing and stuff like that because right. their business, you know their business expenses and I think I, I kind of got the vibe that I'll have to pay it at the end of the year Anyway, if I don't put it into my business, right? So yeah so no, I think that's a good point. Yeah, I wasn't spending enough money. So I was getting I was paying a little bit more at the end This is right here, right? Right. right. Um, no, I think that's a good point and I actually it's funny because that conversation came up um, I want to say like a month or so ago where it came up a couple of times where people began to understand or a couple younger streamers began to understand that like, you know at the end of the year, you're gonna have to pay money no matter what so if you can pay out some business expenses, right? Not like dropping a couple thousand dollars on just merchandise and a couple thousand dollars on, you know, like a car or something like that. But if you buy it, you know, your business expenses, um, then that helps lower the amount of taxes you actually pay at the end of the year. And the money went to your benefit instead of like just going to the government. All right, well, I got a couple of shots on him, but I don't have out. Got these kids? You got both of them? Yeah. Uh, we got a question from chat. 
Um, and, and I'll I'll kind of answer and then kind of hear what, what your thoughts. Actually, let's hear your thoughts first, Brozone. So someone asked why forming an LLC um, incorporation is beneficial. Um, you formed an LLC for your stream, right? Um, yeah, I I finally did it like uh this like this for 2020 and okay, okay i didn't do it before and i think i mean if i i honestly don't know my manager just basically helped me out with it i think it's just mm -hmm. like over the long term it's probably just a better idea so like that way you can you know you can get a business you know credit card and stuff like that but i think right. you get a lot a few more different tax write-offs than you did if you're just not doing it i think but i'm not 100 percent sure certain so yeah yeah no so i think it, so first off it helps a little bit um which this isn't tax advice but it helps a little bit on like the legal protection side of things right um so i think that's important to create the llc um but yeah no i think it further from the tax perspective and the money perspective I, I think it just helps you know obviously like you're saying with that business account um if, if you need to open a business account you know you're gonna need a ein number that's for the business instead of like your social right um so, you know, you need it for that reason in case anyone didn't know. Um, but then, yeah, and then for like the credit card too. Um, are they over on the side? There's one shot. Yes. No, I oh my God. Let's go. Let's go. I don't know how I got that, but um, you, you did all that. <laughs> uh, what are some mistakes or like have you seen anybody that and of course like not singling anybody out just like generally speaking is there anything that like or maybe even you messed up that you learned later that you're like dang i wish i had known this or like i wish i had done this differently um that you would like recommend um yeah so i mean we already talked about a few is like um like last year i wish i would have put a little bit more money into the business like i wish i would have paid you know a few more editors or uh, you know got an editor yeah. like earlier for my youtube channel or you know stuff like that and i and the business credit card I, I i still haven't done it i just i need to do it still just because one right. you can like like you know if i'm paying for like you know my home office or i'm paying for my equipment or my phone um uh you know i, I also want to start racking up on you know good rewards points on the on those credit cards because you know those are some beefy purchases like right. i bought a i bought a five thousand compute five thousand dollar computer i just i didn't put that on a, a, a company credit card which I could have easily got however many, you know, maybe like a, f a free flight or something. Oh, this right. guy's sniping. Where is he? He's stunned. Nice. All right. I think that's a great point with the credit cards because I, I don't know how it was for you, but like when I grew up, um, there was kind of like a negative stigma mm -hmm. around credit cards. Yeah. Right? And like my yep. parents always kind of had a little bit of a negative stigma um and rightfully so right like you got to be responsible with it because you can't spend more than you have um but it's kind of like you were saying you know if you buy a credit card that gives you points back on travel and like you know that you're going to travel a lot then instead of just spending five thousand dollars on a pc and you're not even getting anything back from it you know oh dang 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 dang, dang. i got lit up um he's outside down to the left i got i got him i got him you got him okay um, I was going on a rant and I got distracted, but basically what I was saying is like, like you were saying, you can get rewarded for that purchase that you're going to make anyways. And now you got something for it instead of just like, you know, blowing $5,000. Right. So. Yeah. And that's like a mistake, but I, I didn't have the credit card and I just, I needed to upgrade quickly. So that was definitely, I don't know, one of the things. And then, yeah, I think back to the credit card thing, like my, I mean, oh. Jeez. It was always a like a vibe or yeah, the stigma like you said like dude all credit cards are bad And that's the same with debt, you know, like um, like not all debt is bad debt You know, there's good debt and bad debt and like it always it took me forever to learn that like Like it's okay to like, you know forever like, you know, take it on a loan for a house or you know, whatever it is, you know, but Yeah, I, I don't recommend yeah. getting a credit card unless you know, you know that you can like pay it off like that's that's the point I think of the of the credit card thing is like if you can pay it off right away then boom you have your points taken care of or like you can have those points right 
No, and, and you can even, um, I, I believe a lot of credit cards too will set up, um, you can set it up if you want to, but basically like the debit card, I mean the credit card will act just like a debit card, so you can make it do like automatic withdrawals from your bank account when you go spend whatever money you spend, mm -hmm. um, so that you don't forget to like, you know, pay off what you had in there, right. and then you know, pay like interest and fees and like all that jazz that, that nobody wants to pay. Um, I need to get a gun. I don't know if you got These kids are dead. I can. Thing over there on you. No, yeah, no, there's like the gas is what I pull in. So. So someone asked Rex on point asked when did you decide to make it into a business and start approaching it that way financially, and, and you kind of because you had to hustle between a regular job for a bit and going full time, right? Yeah, I think that's like the biggest thing with like con the content stuff and streaming and YouTube is like, I mean, we're, you know, you, it's so hard because it takes, you have to have, you know, you have to have a certain amount of, you know, subs or, you know, viewers or whatever in order for really, you can't just like, hey, I'm gonna quit this and now I'm gonna do this. You know what I mean? Like you have to build up a, a community or a foundation like over time. And so like, I mean, I've been streaming yeah. for five years and I made a big mistake during Fortnite. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go full time during Fortnite. I had money saved up just in case and stuff, but I made a lot of mistakes. Like, like during that time, it's like I could have just, you know, just even from the tax side of things, and and also, you know, the money wise, I should have just kept on working part time because I worked at a restaurant and I was working part time anyway. So maybe like less hours and then still do yeah. that. But, um, it's just it's just something that you just gotta build over time, and you know, it takes people years and years and years to really build um you know it took me okay it took me four years to get fifty thousand followers on twitch and then in 2020 it in like one year i basically doubled that so it's like you just like right. kind of never know what's gonna happen so you should always you know sometimes when you're building up you should always have like a backup plan but you should always have some stability just because you like the content creation you like never know what's gonna happen Right. You know, you just, you right. really have no idea. And, you know, most, to be honest, most people aren't very good at their money. So like, that's, <laughs> that's a, that's a part of it too. But it took a, it took a long while to build up that thing, that core and that foundation to where I felt comfortable, you know, doing it full time kind of a thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it takes no, time. I, it's, it's true. Cause you could have a year where, you know, you absolutely kill it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but like you were saying, maybe in the first year, you, you know, you were growing or whatever. But I, I feel like even sometimes established streamers or, or mid-tier streamers, like you could have a great year and then the next year it could just be lower for whatever reason. And it could have been that, you know, you didn't do anything wrong, but maybe you just made less the next year. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of, I think, the nature of the beast, right, is like planning for that, trying to be as strategic like you were saying, putting away at least what you think you need just in case of like, you know, a lower income month or something like that um yeah and there's a question in my chat too it's like um they're talking about the the volatility of like streaming so basically especially yeah. with gift subs right gift subs are kind of like a crazy thing like one month like i'm out two months ago maybe i had three thousand subs but now i'm at like 1800 like that's a big difference in terms of of income you know each month and so that's the thing with streaming and content like each month is very 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 different because of right. you never know who's gonna want to you know donate or drop gift subs or you know right. you may win a tournament stuff like that so i think that's why it's very very inconsistent and so being good with your money and saving your money and having always a backup plan is like really good to have yeah yeah do you do any kind of like like any time during the year do you like look at what you've made so far and like kind of try to project what you think you're going to make on that year or do you just kind of do a year-end evaluation and and be like okay this is how i did um yeah so well 2020 was like an insane 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 year for me just because yeah. okay what well it's public and i guess it's public knowledge right so like in tournaments i mean i made like sixty thousand dollars in tournaments i'm getting sniped out from somewhere i think this building oh, really? oh here he is oh yeah i'm dead <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm gone. I, I'm lagging. I couldn't react fast enough, but it's cool. It's cool. Um, I'll let you focus. I'll let you do your thing.
Okay, there we go. And that's why I roll with you. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but back to your question. No, I really, I don't know. I think that's like one of the biggest, like the hardest things for streaming is like the inconsistencies. But I try to, I don't know. Like you just gotta, you gotta like accept like how inconsistent it is, right? So like, right. It's hard to like take a look at your numbers and like, I don't know, because a lot of people can get down and a lot of people get discouraged by looking at their numbers. Like I'm, I mean, yeah. my viewer count's way lower than you know it was four months ago, but like it is what it is. Like that's just the way of the streaming thing. That's just how it goes. You, it, there's highs right. and there's lows, and that's just how it works, you know. Yeah. So I try not yeah. to, to be honest. No, I, I mean, even uh, and on my end, sometimes, you know, because obviously having clients that are streamers, like I, I see the volatility in, in someone, you know, one month to the next or maybe like one quarter to the next. Um, but, you know, like you're saying, it's just kind of like, OK, you know, I had a lower month or maybe I had a couple months that were lower, but you just and it's easier said than done. Right. Like you can't let it get to you. Um, but it's definitely just a part of, of the gig, I think. Yeah. Um, we got 14 left you got 14 kills um what about i, I know you, you said you were with it if, if we talked a little bit about it but you're kind of in the home buying process right now we're in the process of looking for a home um how has that been like being someone who has self-employed income and like dealing with banks um and and you know going through that process because i know a lot of similar creators will go to banks for loans or for mortgages um and sometimes it can be a little discouraging or frustrating like what what has your experience been like um yeah so this is like the first time i've really ever done it but i mean yeah we're i mean we were talking about it right so like yeah some you know cpas i'm a juggernaut now some cpas <laughs> don't um are just very uneducated and about the 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 industry and that's i mean we saw firsthand with my tax return is like some people just don't understand the industry which is like you know it's kind of new to a lot more people and my taxes were done incorrectly so now it's been a frustrating situation because i gotta it you know i think i have to get it uh redone so yeah but, i mean yeah. it's a learning process i think for a lot of people including myself and now I know what to look for. Now I understand a little bit more, you know, kind right. of a thing. So what did, um, cause I know like a lot of times, right? Like you're self-employed and, and, and for anyone who's like younger, maybe watching the stream, like, you know, kind of how the way how like bank loans work or, or mortgages work is like, you know, if you're like a W2 employee and the bank can like look at your W2s front that you're getting paid from your, uh, employers and they see okay this person makes like seventy thousand dollars every year and we can see like two years of tax returns so they're pretty safe but mm -hmm. the challenge then with like anyone who's self-employed but obviously like a streamer is it goes kind of back to that volatility of income like you know you could have one year where maybe you made like 60k but then the next year you made like you know set the uh, 100k and and the mm -hmm. bank looks at that and they're just like okay well what is the risk of of me handing out a mortgage or you know a loan to this person because the sometimes the banks will look at the money and they'll think it's crazy they won't believe it right. like are you sure that you're doing this correctly like, are you sure that your numbers are right right um but yeah it can be it can be tough yeah it's a very tough situation so but it is what it is like what do you you know what do you do you just gotta yeah. figure it out and keep on moving i guess i don't know <laughs> <laughs> no for sure for sure so what's the what's the move here i'm gonna kill these kids up top oh okay. i'm about to roll up on these kids they're gonna shoot millions of bullets on me and i'm gonna kill them so nice, nice. dumb full health so What's going on, Justin? So Justin asked, does having a signed contract with a team, is, or does having a signed contract with a team beneficial for that? Um, so my answer to that is, I think obviously it does, right? Like if you're a content creator um, and you're signed to an org and you know, you're know you on a salary um, of let's just like, for example purposes, let's just say your salary is like 50K, then at least like when you're going to the bank and you're trying to pull a mortgage or maybe you're pulling like a loan or, or whatever you're doing, at least they have the salary from the organization to look at mm -hmm. and, and they can see that that's consistent income. And then honestly, like all your earnings from uh, streaming, like donos or subs or advertisements, like all that's just kind of like cherry on the top. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think being signed to a contract with a team, as long as like you've got reoccurring income, I think it's a big plus. 
or, yeah, you have on most on most contracts, uh, I feel like for like teams and stuff, are they? It's just considered a, a contractor, right? Is it, or is, it doesn't consider employed, right? Like so, that's different than. It, it, yeah. It, so it matters on the terms. I guess I should specify that it does matter on the terms of whatever are in that contract. Um, and so it could vary a little bit contract by contract, which is, you know why you should have a, a lawyer who knows what they're doing look at it are you about to win this game or did you just win this game nah there's two of those two guys left two left um so yeah it, it does matter like the kind of compensation they're giving you um you know whether it is a salary whether it's not a salary how they're reporting it on their organization side because maybe mm -hmm. they're just giving you like you know maybe they're just paying out as 10.99 um you know money instead of like an actual set salary so i guess it could vary a little bit depending on what your terms are right. um so that's an important point look at this guy what is he doing <laughs> where's his buddy at he's right here oh, he's got a jump right All right, Frozen, this is all you, man. I didn't have a single kill, so this, <laughs> this is all you. Gas is moving in. Loose plates are rotating. Oh, jeez. This is unfortunate. Losing ground. This is gonna be the first game. That's not easy. No, it, it, it's not easy, and it, it's definitely not easy while answering tax and finance questions. <laughs> so, it's like reading. I mean, it's like reading chat all day long, you know? Yeah. No. 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 I know. I understand. Um, dude. Well, I, listen. I appreciate it. Uh, I, it was fun, and, and I think hopefully helpful and maybe i even honestly hopefully helpful to your chat like just hearing financial stuff from from your perspective mm -hmm. um because i think hearing it from the talent side and and kind of some of the struggles you guys face it's easy to relate right because like sometimes i think it can feel like as a creator that you're going through stuff that's that's just you but i think hearing it from other creators and and seeing that other people have the same struggles or same like questions is is, is beneficial for the industry so right yeah it's uh yeah, it's, it's definitely especially because a lot more people are trying to get into the streaming stuff and the YouTube stuff. So yeah, I think and a lot yeah. of people are just kind of like they just have no idea because like it's a new thing. Like I I mean, you start everybody starts from the same spot, right? Like we have right. we have no idea. So yeah, it's um it's a learning thing as you go along and you'll definitely you know, the more you mess with it, the more you do your research, the more you'll learn, I guess.